I actually started cubing before I started puzzles. When I was 12 years old, my friend teached me how to solve the Rubik's Cube in a beginner's method. And I was so fascinated by the fact that I lived 12 years thinking that the Rubik's Cube is an impossible puzzle that no one can solve. And then he comes and teaches me how to do it. It was mind-blowing. I was flabbergasted. It was such an amazing revelation and I was so keen to learn more about this hobby. I'm quite a hobby person, but cubing is really coming back now. Sometimes when I make a video, I have to wait for it to export and then I have like 5-10 minutes to play with the Rubik's Cube, which is perfect. I just enjoy the act of learning something new and I find that the Rubik's Cube is a pretty chill output for that. Also what I like about Rubik's Cubes is that it is a satisfying and fun activity. Like puzzles, playing with something physical is very interesting and calming, it's chill, you get into the zone of moving as fast as you can in speed cubing and it truly makes you chill. There's also a lot of ways to solve a Rubik's Cube. There's not just one method. And you know, to solve a Rubik's Cube, you don't need to be a genius. You just need to know what to do and when to do that. And you need to memorize some algorithms. Not everyone likes memorizing algorithms, but if you memorize stuff, it's like training to your brain. And I find hobbies that train my brain really attractive. I like my brain, I, I love it. I want to explore it and make it bigger and like pump it up to be smarter and stuff. In this video, I'll show you two of my ways to solve a Rubik's Cube. Just a little overview for you guys, non-cubers. Maybe you'll get into speed cubing, maybe not. Also, one of the best things in speed cubing is that you always have something to improve, whether it's learning new algorithms to be faster in your solve or just doing finger tricks that make your solve faster or learning about new strategies to solve faster. And everything you do, you optimize that solving time. I find it extremely satisfying to improve myself in speed cubing. It's a great output for crazy perfectionists like me. I really wanna thank my girlfriend Gaia for buying the best speed cube I ever had, which is this GAN cube. It's so amazing, it, it moves like butter. It has these magnets on the side and every time the cube does a spin, it locks into the place where it should be. And the coolest thing is that it's so smooth that if you move it fast enough, it does a 180 degree spin, which is amazing for speed cubers and it just ignited my passion for this hobby to a whole new level, man. Okay guys, so I wanted to explain how basic cubing works. I will be going over the two methods that I use and know. So one method is called the beginner's method. And what you have to do there is you just make a cross on the white side like this. And then you start by adding the corners to the correct places. So I have this corner, white, uh, orange and blue. So I put it in the blue corner. And as you can see, I do it with all corners until I have the white face complete. Then what I have to do is add those edges. There are a couple of ways to do that, but the most beginner way is by looking at the edge and then at the corner and then executing an algorithm. Then what you have to do is make the top face yellow. And here as well, we have algorithms to do that. In the last step, you have to put the yellow face in the correct position. For this, we have algorithms, as you can see, we have all of those uh, for the last step. And this has an algorithm as well that I learned especially for this position which goes like this and this is solved. So this was beginner's method. Uh, there's also a way to solve it faster in the beginning after doing the cross, which is called F2L, where you, instead of inserting every corner at first, uh, you find the corresponding edge before that, and then you combine them before you put them in the right place. This is a very good shortcut, a good thing to learn 
uh, once you've mastered the beginners method. Remember the name F12. So this was the beginners method. And now I want to show you the root method. So what's going on in the root method is instead of doing the cross like we did before, we are doing uh, two by three by one blocks. People usually do it on one of the sides, but I prefer doing it on the white side because I'm not that skilled at it. So I'm doing that. We have two by two by one. Now I'm looking for this two. Okay, so we have the first two by three by one. Then we're doing the same for the next uh, side. And the thing with room method is that they use this middle side a lot like you use it almost always and the reason for that is that you want to minimize the times that you spin it or look at it like this and this saves you up a lot of time and we're in the top phase then we are putting all the yellow corners in their correct orientation with algorithms and then we put them in the correct position so once we have that, there's another step to orient every yellow and white edge. Uh, so the yellow and white edges will all be on the top and bottom face. And then after that, we put uh, the left and right top edges in their places. Also, of course, using uh, algorithms. And then we just have simple patterns till we solve it. This is the second method that I use. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching me use this cube. I certainly enjoyed playing with it on camera. And yeah, it's so buttery and smooth and fun just to spin it, man. So let's solve it from beginning to end with the CFOP method. Let's look at it for a second and go. This was a different video, but you know, Puzzle Wonder is a wonder, man. Like I wander around in my brain and I find new stuff to do. And I just want to share the cool stuff and the stuff that I enjoy with you guys, because that will be the best content that I can make. So thanks guys for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.